I've been out of prison three years. Also, we've seen uh, alcohol, parties, uh, violence, great parenting. Um, it was just normal. Blood, seen, like, seen murders, seen murders in front of my eyes. There's a time when people had enough and they want to go home to their families. You stole off that, you take it off that, you robbed off that. I was sick of that lifestyle, bro. I had enough, and it tells you, you know, it always catches up on me. What you do in life, it catches up. Young soldier of God. Steady march. Yeah, my name is uh, Tyrell Kanaka, known as TK. Um, he um, born and bred from Manureo, South Auckland, New Zealand. So uh, I'm currently today, um, I'm employed by uh, BBM. I'm Dave Letelli, uh, Jr. I, uh, he's given me uh, an opportunity. Uh, as you can see, he's, uh, the change. It's a, it's a safe place to go to um, and being around a uh, positive environment uh, at the healing and um, just being around uh, loving people. I've been out of prison um, the longest uh, today. I've been out of prison three years. I've been out of court system. I haven't been near the courts. I haven't been near the probation. Uh, that's all cleaned up. Yeah, I just had enough of the getting locked up. You know? Uh, that lifestyle, um, it's God's calling, you know, it's all, you know, he says he has a, he has a plan for us, and then, and it's in his timing, and I'm guessing now, I'm guessing it's his timing now. Nice. Well, how has the last three years been, bro, since you've been now? Um, yeah, I was a roller coaster, really, um. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it was a battle. It was a battle. It was a battlefield. I've uh, been locked up for a long time. It was just, um, I don't know where. I was trying to find find a way, where to start in my life. Um, it was not. It wasn't an easy road. Once you're released from prison after you've been incarcerated for a long time, um, in maximum security. Um. He just didn't know where to start. Born and bred, Mani uh, Reo, a place called Clinton Park, uh, 1980. People would know it's known as Real Hard, the stomping hood of the south side. Um, yeah, the, all my upbringing was there. Yeah, born and bred, um, pretty much knew everyone. Rewa, yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, so, you know, it was actually, um, it was good, really. Uh, everyone was, it was a sporting environment around rugby league. Um, the Marlins, Monday Little Marlins, where everyone, the whole community was all about sporting. Yeah, we used to see, also we've seen uh, alcohol, parties, uh, violence, um, and just, we just followed along with it. Who followed the, the what the hood or the hood wanted to get up to? It was like let, let, let unleash really. Uh, no parent, no parenting. Uh, we just did our own thing when we were kids. Uh, just run away from home. Uh, what did your parents do for a living, bro? Do you mind? Oh, uh, my old my dad was a. Uh, my dad was a tribesman, patch member, Motara. My parents from grew up in Otara. They moved from Otara to get away from uh, the parties and the, um, the, the lifestyle of um, what gets down in South Auckland, you know, drugs and alcohol, uh, just uh, the behaviour of people. I, I believe that we're, it's um, almost just normal, what we see, what we saw. It's just, just a normal... Uh, Activities, uh, what we hear from other other towns, and they, they talk, next they say that that money deal was, uh, um, well, New Zealand. They say the money deal was one of the worst uh, communities in New Zealand. Uh, with the population, um, of, of, uh, with the crime rate, um, and the laws. Um, but we didn't look at the side of that. We just uh, look what's in the now, what's in front of us, and the behavior that goes towards it as well.
How was school for you, bro? How was like primary school? What primary school did you go to? Um, I went to what's common primary. Uh, ran at KLB just um, in Clinton. Um, what's common? Yeah, uh, I did all my primary. I wasn't quite intelligent. I wasn't really bright on my um schoolwork and stuff. Yeah, I was struggling with my schoolwork and stuff. Um, I went to Waymouth Intermediate as well. Um, from there, my dad passed away. Uh, How old were you then? I was 12 years old. 12. Um, left the home with my baby brother. Um, he's a senior member of the uh, New Zealand, Mighty Mongo of New Zealand. Uh, he was a uh, Woolies, uh, my uncle Woolies, uh, right hand. Yeah, at that time, me and my baby brother was at home with my mum. Um, I think we, um, we had no father figure around us at, at that time. My mum was struggling to to uh, control me and my brother. So she did, she, she did it tough. I was just a hard journey at that, at that age. At that time, uh, so I my, my parents was the Mongol Mongol Mongol, uh, Woody and Roy. They are the two chiefs of the, um, the chain dogs. Um, they're the founders. Um, and that's my family. Why I look up at them is because they were there for, for us, uh, fed us, closed us, and just, we went along with them. But it didn't mean that, um, then ask to join them, it just we just fell into it. We slipped, we slipped into it because it's all my, it's all my family, like blood family. Yeah, I went to high school. I went to Pepper High. I had to move away from my mum's because my mum ended up uh, going with my dad's cousin. He was the notorious president of the Hamilton chapter, and then um, I didn't you know get along with him, so I went to stay with my uh, dad's. My dad's parents. Um, yes, I was into sports. Uh, rugby in well, Pepco High was a rugby school, and um, I played league. I was a uh, yeah. I was I was in the Warriors Auckland. I was in the Auckland Warriors development at the nineteen at the nineteen ninety five. So I made New Zealand uh, schoolboy Kiwis, junior Kiwis. Um, made New Zealand Maldives. Uh, he was overseas and I played in Australia with New Zealand Maldives, isn't it? Oh, okay, yeah, so you did good with the sports. Yeah, bro, yeah, good with the sports as well. Yeah. So did that keep you out of trouble at all, or was it sort of, you know, go play and then come back to the hood and then was it, or did it sort of keep you out of trouble? Oh, yeah, um, uh, I, I didn't, I was looking for trouble. Uh, I was just like playing the league and um, um and then yes uh, yes I come back from overseas and I'm back into the uh into the deep again um as I had the mob mobs ar um, around me. Um so I'll have my um I'll have my track suit on, my lead track track suit on and then so around me I have surrounding me, I have all the top I have my top chiefs all around me, you know, and uh, I don't look at them as chiefs, I look at them as my family members, as we all one, we all one family. I was going to a league game, I mean, a league training, and they gave me a right to training, and I see as my family fighting, they must be doing a, um, must be staying near a tennis shop, and um, I had no choice to get in there. You know, and I'm like, yeah, shut up, I'm, I'm not gonna watch my family get beaten up, outnumbered. Well, you know, so I was out there, I got to be out there and help my family, you know. Um, so it's just uh, born into it, you know, born into to what my family does. Yeah, the drug use, um, well, I don't smoke weed, I don't smoke uh, cigarettes. Yeah, it was just pee. Um, I took a toll of me, so I, yeah, I, um, Started smoking pee. Um, What's uh, that led to that? Or? Um, I think it was just 
what the foot on really yeah it got it got really uh really really heavy um I think my behavior started to change uh did you have any children by this point or? yeah I did i had um i had i had two two sons at the time my, how, how was that for you bro you know um when your first son was born my first my at that time my boy uh yeah, I was quite, um, yeah, I was confused. I was confused, um, so young. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to do. Um, I was just, I wasn't in the right state of mind. I was just being, ha just hang, just, all I did was hang with the dogs, you know, hang with the chain dogs, my, my family. Yeah, um, I was abusing my partner a lot. Who, because of the behavior, what it does to you, that, that, what, does, um, what the, the substance does to you, that behavior became, came uh, out of hand. Um, so I ended up having my first charge, my first, uh, my first attendance at Mount Eden Prison, uh, due to a uh, male female. There was a, yeah, and from then it was just, just an ongoing, uh, just ongoing backwards and forwards out at another prison. How was it for you, man? Like first going inside to Mount Eden. Yeah, well, um, for my surname and uh, yep, we have a another Karaka here that asked me to, what is this Karaka to you? You know, he's asked my brother. All right, do you want to go to his unit? So, yeah, um, I don't mind. I'll go anywhere. So, okay, as we're going to the unit. Man, when I then I was like, you know, but I was like, ah, shucks, a all different game it was in, and what in this whole unit, and um, I already knew the whole unit through around here, like South Auckland, you're like, oh yeah, we were all like all in one, all in one unit, but I um, when I got in there, everyone started laughing because I was laughing, they were like giving me hugs and kisses from all different gangs, and they're laughing, why is because I'm like. Uh, like a, a superstar league player, you know, damn, we, uh, one place of all you, we see you in here. Yeah, um, but the question is, um, it was the unit that I was in, that they said, man, you, they put you straight in the, in the jungle unit, where we got lions and tigers and you, you know, you name it, and I'm just right in the deep of it, you know, um, yeah, we're sitting out there from there, bro, um, yeah, it's just, the violence was getting heavier. Um, I beat my partner. Yeah, but I, you know, my love, I, sh I was sharing her. It was it was the wrong kind of love. I beat him maybe because I wanted to, to be the whole. But um, I, that's what I saw really. What I I believe now that what I saw of my dad to my to my mom it was a it was a normal behavior. So I continue that, that legacy. I think it's just their habit, or no, um, that's what the myth does to you. Uh, the lying, and, um, all the bad stuff that just comes. I believe, I believe that's the the devil. You know, the devil's the devil's will. GBH, and then also while I was inside for GBH and that two GBHs on remand, I get called in for. Uh, interview by COIB asking about where was I related into uh, um, a home invasion. Put me to Mount Eden and then I got caught up in a, I started a riot, big uh, gang riot with the Mong Mob, uh, Mong Mob, Killer Bees and uh, KC's against the, the screws. So we had a big massive, uh, sort of massive um, um, form of uh, Living off mattresses, um, pool tables, the whole unit was on on fire like, the whole night, on rage non-stop. Yeah, after the after the riot, uh, the riot went out all night to the following morning. Um, so I said, uh, bro, I, I tell you, I got eleven of us got eleven of us got sent up to Perry. Ten walked out easy. Um, I had a hard, I got, I got, I got, I got assaulted, I got assaulted really badly from um, the room squad. 
I've got um, yeah, like a Daltu on the, on the screws. Um, and from there, they, uh, they sent me up to Maxi, Super Maxi, and I was placed on B Block. That's where I landed, I landed on B Block. Um, I was at we the, we the bottom landing, which was the remand, and at the top landing was a sentence. B Block. Um, yeah. Later on, I got filled in from the KCs, from the Chief, uh, Dave 74. He, he, he looked after me up there, and um, and everybody else so looked after me because, you know, uh, as I'm a loner but by myself uh, at the time. Um, and I was looked after from all the gang members, you know, because they knew where, where my journey was, you know. I was a league player. So, how was your, how was your time, bro? How did it go for you? I'm, I'm actually. Mm. Uh, it was good. It was good. Um, well, it was good and bad, really. Um, uh, well, what I'm saying was good is because I uh, there was no there was no. Uh, it's funny that was, uh, there was not much. I did not fall into much trouble. I mean, um, just when uh, um, as a cruiser. Other the gangs were mainly the Bloods and the Crips were really the Island boys were having me they had their doubts and fights me and um I was a cleaner at the time up in Maxi um so I had to clean up the mess you know, blood seen like seen murders seen murders in front of my eyes happened and um I even tried to save you know, Saving the, the um, couple of the fellas, you know, and I'm getting hit over the head as well by accident, you know, but they're trying to pull me off. But no, no, I just want to put a little stop. But uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw a lot of what was going on up there. Yep, um, yeah, I think this big leg, I just finished still, you know, um, I, uh, I thought I lost my family. Like, uh, it's just what, um, you know, that's it. I lost my family, you know, because I'm getting away for a long time. I, 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 was, I was struggling, I was struggling, uh, going through, I ended up starting getting into mental health. I'm um, you know, not in the right head space, uh, missing my family, my children. I ended up blocking everyone out for, for three years. But it's a quite a long time. That's a long time, then. I ended up putting my kids' photos away. I I could not see photos. I just needed to uh, stride out, you know, day by day. Then yeah, just get stronger. I wanted to find something different. I wanted to go. I ended up going to church service in there. And there was uh, four of us at a time. Yeah. Uh, as it was a max of security, so they take four at a time. They couldn't take the numbers because uh, this way the um, murder gets to take place from bringing so many numbers out. Yes, yeah, so they just break the, break them in fours. So um, yeah, I went to church in there, and um, because I saw the changes in the in the other boys, you know, shots, man, that's you. Uh, I always get man, you are uh, you also you mean you used to be a bad fellow. Why come you not? How could you not be, why are you so different for? You know, you should be, this was you here. You know, you were like, a, you know, you are the, you are the monster smashing up people, you know. Um, you know, you're playing league with us, you know, you're, you're just, um, but his whole life, his whole talk, everything was started changing, you know. From there, not long ago, everyone's all moved on from there, started from their church. You really get like, well, they moved away from the unit, moving, you know, going, like, going on the journey. Like, well, how come they go into another prison? That's because, uh, so later on, the screws are getting them because they want to make a change. People have enough, you know, there's a time when people have enough and they want to go home to their families. And they asked me, Christian, they asked me, to, uh, was I felt that something in my heart where, um, uh, like I was missing my family, and what do I need to do to get get to my family? 
And um think of my stars we need to move you away from from this play from this unit, from from up there. Because, you know, being around in the environment for all the gangsters, you know, um you're not gonna move forward. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be in the environment and you're gonna either be a dead or alive, really. Or do a longer sit do a jail, uh, longer sent, jail, um, longer jail sentence, because you can easily catch up, uh, catch up uh, another charge. I mean, so um, I chose to put my hand up to go to um to another uh to another prison, was with my tucker, to do a program, and uh, from there from there I did the program, and then came back to Maxi, and. After the program, my whole behavior, my mentality, everything started to, was all changed because of the boys were just saying, Are you, oh, you changed here? Some of these budgets are going different. I said, yeah, I just want to do something different with my life. Yeah, because I, I've seen enough, I saw enough abuse, you know, of the, the environment. I said, You know, I've seen people getting, you know, uh, I don't want to explain it, but I've seen, you know, uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, you know, especially people um, of Mongolia and all that, you know, all that, Holy Roy and I know PC, and he was a godfather with the Mongol mob up here in Auckland. Um, Nigga John, and you know, um, just, he'd been around in that environment, you know, uh, from there, it, it comes down to us. We we're, were the next generation from them. Yeah, and um, that generation today, I'm actually the one, actually, I'm the one that is shining the light right now. And hopefully, I can, I can, uh, put, draw them, draw them in, you know, draw them in, come in the follow the same direction as me. The day I was getting out, trust me, I was up by four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning, and, and the gates don't the release the release gates don't open till about uh, ten o'clock. But as I was getting up, when I got out, um, yeah, I didn't know where. What sus, I was just saying to myself, um, sus, what, what, what am I going to do? My life. What am I going to do? Am I going to go back to it, or do I want to leave this path and you know, go do this? Yeah, go go to church and stuff like that. Um, but I believe that if you go to church, you're gonna get a better life. You gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta, you gotta know a lot about God. So I follow, I follow this chapter called John three sixteen. You know, the man you know, he's given his only son to to help others. You know, I believe in him. I've been baptized. Uh, I just like you know, put my both hands up. But it's just like, you know, when you make that, that new change and you want stuff and that, you can't get it. You won't get it straight away because I believe it. I want this and that. If I change, I want to get this and that. It doesn't happen straight away. It takes time. So it's called a process. So right now I'm in the process of my work from the day I got released. During the process, I, I um, fell in a bit of a, bit of a, a dark spot that, that, that was caught up with me. Which means uh, I was in a dark place, maximum security. Uh, and um, what I saw up there is what I, um, is what I, um, is what I brought out and did it to myself. Did it to myself, but I was um, a little bit under pressure in myself, not uh, not reaching out for help or talking to someone. So I went away from the I went away from it, and I was I was found found by my family members and a couple of the Mongol members. Can you talk about what actually happened? Bro? Yeah, I was going through a bit of a, a struggle with a, um, a parenting in myself as a father. You attempted suicide, was it, brother? Yeah, it was a full it was a full proper one. Yeah, it was a full proper one. Um, so uh, it was a miracle, really, 
these ones were green, were green healing. And they see me at the tree down by the river. Wow. Like, like, uh, there was a, uh, yeah, there's just like, oh, something was underneath the tree. And they went to have a look at it and they saw me. Um, my eye was popped out. And then, yeah, my, 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 my little brother, you know, he's like one of the head of the moment, one of the, one of the um, senior members of his, of his, of uh, our club, you know, at the time when I was with him, uh, trying to see what he saw, his own brother, you know, his own flesh and blood. Um, yeah, he did, they did anything to, to get me down and, um, yeah, so they went to, uh, they went to, what do you call it? They went to restrain me, went to see, Suscitate me uh, to CPR me for 14 minutes. So, so it was a miracle because he, no one couldn't bring me back. And my brother had to, it was hurting, they were crying that bad. So my brother whacked me three times to the head for king hits too. And this one, my brother's a, he's a heavy, he, he, he can scrap. He's like a, a, Andy Ruse, is it? Like him. Mm. So my brother threw three of those to my head and woke me up, bro. Wake me up and I was like, uh, just lack of uh, no, no oxygen to the brain. That's just made me who I am today. Uh, so I was like, I can't, I can't stop. So I was like, I'm actually on medication. Now I'm on my antidepressants. But I don't take them all the time now. I'm slowly warning, warning myself off of them. Yeah. Um, just, just. Uh, I'm just strengthening myself through doing exercises and um, getting back to rugby league, all the stuff that I love doing, you know, and getting myself around the around the environment. Like Dave was one of them, I don't think. Yeah, bro, it's a miracle. I um, uh, just, uh, you know, um, it's not it's not easy to uh, to be by them because they, they want to see changes now. I even put my hand up for rehab. I did, I did three rotations. I did the man up as program as well. A couple of times, and um, I had, to, I was strong enough to go, to move forward. I did the A and E, the AA and Salvation Army. I graduated that as well, and um, T Kung as well. I graduated that as well. That was my rehab. I don't want to be around. Um, uh, I believe that I don't, I don't need to be around gang members to do the program. I can do this on my own, so I'm different other places. And I did it, and I did it, and um, man, look where I am today. And I, I, I know that today that, you know, Willie Roy, Wong Tong, my, the, the head of the Chiefs up there, up there now, PC, the Godfather of the Chainsaw as well. I believe today, those three, those three, those three names I see, you know, those names there, um, Today, uh, they'd be so proud of me today because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here today. Uh, I've actually, I, I needed to stop that legacy of the, the way they, what I saw of them. Like, um, when they passed on, like, especially Woolly, everyone, you know, all the other gang clubs were, uh, what? Always had a red flag, uh, always wear a woolly because you know he was he showed no fear to any other club. He did what he did, what he does, and you know he lived up to his name. Well, he taught us that, and we, we did the same stuff like we were hard to say that, that, that lifestyle. Um, we lived that luxury lifestyle as well. We've seen a lot, we had heaps of money with everything, we named it, all the materials, we name it all. At the end of the day, it's nothing. It's nothing, my brother, it's like just, it's dead money. Everything's, everything that you touch, that you, that you take and steal, take off people, is, uh, is all wrong, you know? It's all wrong, and, uh, and you did not, um, you did not work for that. You stole off that, you take it off that, you robbed off that. Yeah, 
I was sick of that lifestyle, bro. I live there. I had enough of that. It tells you, you know, it always catches up on you. Say what you do in life, it catches up. But now, today, you know, it's God's calling you. Know, he has a plan for you, and I believe that plan. Right now, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have this right now when I'm, when I'm sitting in right now. And then, um, got all my stuff in the shed and just, you know, all, all given. So you know, that's what, that's a purpose. A purpose in life, what you know. I'm looking forward for two, 2020, 2024. I was enjoyed to have the time with my family, you know. Not waking up to, I'm too used to waking up every Christmas behind the south door as a gangster, you know. Um, yeah, a lot of people, everyone was against me. I was uh, angry at me because I was hurting everyone out there. I'm not proud to be where I, where I went to or what I have on me. Uh, you know, I got it all marked on me. Um, yeah, I've got some, all the bullet wounds. Um, I want to encourage everyone, you know, or everyone's been in, in, a, in, a, in the same uh, place where, I, where I've been, um, you know, in a dark place. Just want everyone to um, keep keep following me uh, and um, probably watch my change and um, and then chase those fruits, man, of love. Um, it's called miracles and it's all God's fruits. Yeah, man. And that's who, what I'm doing today. So it's chasing these fruits. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's powerful. And um, yeah, uh, just enjoying being in my home, um, my job. Uh, those, those are all the good things that you do um, in a good um Goals and opportunities will um, will help in the long run, and then will help others as well to follow your same same path. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't need to walk with a team behind me. You know, I I got I got God's armor out there over everyone, all the gangs. You know, you know I can sit down and at the table and eat eat and they eat fruit and eat food with them. Um, and just having that, you know, having that, that good, uh, that good, their vibes of, uh, and just getting those doors opened up again for me.